In this video demonstration, I will show how to configure the Power Apps Portal Web API. Remember that this is still in preview and changes might still occur that will change this functionality. Also, in order to implement this, your portal version must be at least version 9.2.6.41. I recommend provisioning a new environment and setting the enabled portal for early upgrade. In the first section of the post, I will cover the configuration that is required in order to have the ability to perform web API operations against your CDS environment. This includes configuring the site settings, entity permissions, and web rules. Let's look at the site settings. As you can see, I've enabled API access to both the account and the contact entities. This is done by adding the site setting with web API the entity name and enabled, as well as the second site setting, which lists the fields that are available for the post and patch operations for these entities. In our case, I've added name and account number for account, and first name, last name, email address, telephone, and mobile phone for the contact entity. I also enabled inline error for handling the display of error messages on the portal. That's, next, let's look at the entity permissions. I created two entity permission records for both account and contact to allow read, write, create, and delete permissions. Next, I created a web role called Web API Users and set the authenticated users role to yes and the anonymous user roles to no. And I link the role with the entity permissions that I just created. We can see this by going to the related and entity permissions. I also gave my contact access to that web role. <coughs> Next thing, let's go ahead and take a look at the web pages. I created a new web page called Web API, and I set it to use the starter portal, set the home page or the parent page, the URL, and the template. Once this was saved, a localized content page or a content page was created for this Web API. I've split the code into the HTML code the CSS, and the JavaScript code. The HTML code basically contains the fields that will be used to enter the data and the fetch XML that contains the list of existing records from our CDS environment. You can ignore the commented code. This will be some future post. In the Advanced tab, we have the JavaScript API wrapper, the notification logic, the creation of tables and rows dynamically, which will contain the edit and the delete buttons, and the table layout, which will contain the add and update buttons, or the save and update buttons. We also have binding functions, which binds the buttons to the functions and handlers that will execute on click events to the buttons. And we have the logic that updates the HTML table when changes are made. And then finally, we have the application wrapper, along with the post, delete, and, and patch records for CDS. Finally, we have the table rendering function. All of this code was available on GitHub, and, this, and the URL for this is shown on the screen. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the results record. I'll enter Arnold Stone as the first name and last name, specify the email address, and enter a phone number. Go ahead and click on the save record, and we see that this has been created. Let's go ahead and look 
at our CDS environment and go into the contact. I'll refresh my page and I'll see that this record has been created. I'll go back to my browser and I'll select another record that was created today, click on edit, change the name of that person and their email address. You can also change the phone number. Click on update record. We'll see that the record has been updated in our subgrid. And I'll go back to my context that I recently created, refresh, and I can see that the name has also been changed. Finally, I'll go ahead and delete one of these records. Press the OK button. The record is being deleted. I'll go back to my contacts, refresh, and I'll see that the record has been deleted. Remember again that this is still in preview and performance might not be optimal. Now stay tuned for some more content coming soon on my uh, blog or video log. Thank you for listening.